teaching judgment was something that I focused on from the very beginning of my teaching career when I started at Harvard 15 years ago. This was a question that was at the forefront of my mind because it was so much a forefront of my practice. When I was a practicing lawyers, when I was a practicing lawyer, clients wouldn't come to you and say, please analyze this case and tell me what the answer is. Clients would come to you and say, tell me what we should do. This is what you're getting paid the big bucks for, or what you're getting paid any bucks for. It's what you're getting paid to do as a, as a lawyer. You're getting paid for your judgment. You are not getting paid to answer questions about the law. That's a blunt statement. There are nuances and, and a range of, of actual experience. But it's really important, I think, for students to understand that this is the heart of what they will be doing when they're graduating. And so it becomes critical to how I frame the problems that I give them. I don't want them just to answer problems that say, this is how the Copyright Act would answer this problem. I give them problems that specifically ask them to give me their judgment about what a client should do. And I will score their papers higher if they give good answers, and I'll score their papers lower, and I'll tell them that I'll score their papers lower if they give me solid answers on the law, but they avoid this question about what the client should do. When we do role-playing exercises in class, because we do classroom exercises that give them the same kind of experience, this is the message that I'm giving them. I don't want them just to stop with the this is the way the fair use doctrine would come out if a court were to analyze this case. I say, okay, given that that's the way that the fair use doctrine should come out if a court were to analyze this, what do you tell the client to do? Well, think about what clients want. Clients, if you're, if you're in the copyright space, you don't want to be sued. Or maybe you do want to be able to sue people. Right? You might be on, on one side or the other of these things. How do you take that answer about the law and convert it into what you actually tell the client? What I find is that I don't have the space over the course of a single semester to do more than introduce students to this way of thinking about things. But it's very clear in my interaction with them, both in the classroom and in my office one-on-one -on -one, when we're talking about their papers, that this strikes them as a very different way of thinking about the world that this is important to them. It's something that they are not usually getting confronted with, except in their professional responsibility class. And then in the professional responsibility class, it's often abstracted from a real body of law. Even if in a PR class, you can have a hypo that's got legal stuff built into it, it feels like PR. It doesn't feel like actually practicing law. And so that's what I'm trying to do, is to say that there is not a heavy dose of ethics built into these copyright problems. It's just day in, day out, meat and potatoes, bread and butter, what you do as a lawyer necessarily involves putting yourself at risk.